And as far as Tyson's concerned, uh, look, we're all trying to make the unification. Everybody's working hard on that, and hopefully we can make that happen. If we can't, then he'll defend his title in the UK in March. It's going to be one or the other. But th it feels there's a, there's a will between everybody to make this unification happen. Yeah, I mean, that's all dependent on Joshua um, taking step-aside money. Well, you know, he, he a random an interview bump. Was it, uh, last week and he said he was, uh, it was about legacy, it was about, um, it was about um, something else, and, it was about, and he's also a businessman. So he's a businessman, so businessman, it's all about money. And also, is an offer being put together to present to Anthony Joshua to, se to step aside? I'm not going to go into what's going on behind the scenes, but the fact, I'm just telling you what everybody wants. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants, the Usyk wants, Usyk's team wants, Tyson Fury's team wants. That's what everybody wants to happen. What's good, family? So mash the like button, subscribe, and lick off the bell. So we just heard there from your mans, Frank the Fish, Frank finding Nemo, Warren. Yeah? Wow, he's mad right now in the sport of boxing. I'm not sure what to say, people. Yeah? I've been roasting Mr. Anthony Johnston for a good little while, but honestly, every day it just falls. My opinion of him falls lower and lower. For example, when Mr. Anthony Johnson, Johnston sorry, came out initially with Coogie Bear and said that, yeah, well, I'm into triangles and I'm into business and sometimes it's price, sometimes it's quality, but then again, when he said all that funny style-ish, yeah, I thought, yeah, but you know what it's like, or you know what people are like. Sometimes people just love to hear themselves speak. That's what I was kind of hoping was the case. But now, we hear from Frank. I've got another video coming soon. Eddie Hearn is more or less confirmed. They're in negotiations. And I called it. I said, listen, Eddie Hearn ain't stupid. He was begging. This last week, he's been begging for an offer to be put through. 100%. Begging for it. Yeah? Actions speak louder than words, but in this case, <laughs> their actions and their words are saying the same damn thing. How about that? It's a madness of a situation. And I, what I love the most, you know, though, is the way that Eddie Hearn has tried to steal the YB's bars. Eddie Hearn all of a sudden started saying now, oh, yeah, well, you know, sometimes Step Aside can make strategic sense if AJ's got a new trainer. Yeah, if he has, Eddie, but don't be stealing my bars. Just because I, listen, just because the YB give it all clear... Yeah, just because the YB give it the all clear, just because AJ's new management, the YB, has signed off on the fact that if he's got a new training team, then having more time makes sense. That's only the case, Eddie, if you've enforced a new team. Yeah? Here's with Rob McCrappen still. What's wrong with you? So don't be giving us that one. I'm happy to, I'm happy to eat up the fact that he wants more time with a new trainer. But if you think you're going to flip the R well, we need more time with Rob McCrappen, you can get out of here. Because you've been had eight years. Yeah? How many more years does Rob McCrappen need? He had eight. He had ten. Sick of it. I'm sick of hearing about Rob. Yeah? Rob McFritzel. AJ deep in the get out right now. Yeah? He deep in that next chick with his cup of tea. But it's, yeah, 100%. AJ in the basement. Rob McFritzel got the cup of tea and going around in circles. He locked right in right now, 100%. Anyway, back to this, this Fish Eyes comment. Back to Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo, essentially, he's just confirmed. He said, listen, everyone is on board. And the reason he didn't want to, because he kind of, fair play to the interviewer. The interviewer did his job properly, which is something that can't be said for most interviews. The interviewer basically, out and out, said to Fish Eyes, Fish Eyes, is, are you in negotiations, or have you sent an offer to Mr. Johnson, Johnston, sorry, sorry, yeah, have you sent an offer to Mr. Anthony Johnston, yeah, and Fish Eye said, well, I'm not going to go into that, but know that everyone's on board, so basically, you're saying, yes, I absolutely have, and by the way, Eddie Hearn, got another, like I said, I've got another video coming soon, Eddie Hearn has doubled down and confirmed what Fish Eyes Warren has said, yeah? Now, I'm, uh, I'm not even sure what to say. And in fact, on a quick note, I will say that <laughs> it's Pete Vadillion right now. <laughs> Dillian has cucked himself. And I can't even blame the WBC on this one. Because Dillian has only got himself to blame. But you best believe, people. What do we know? Unifications supersede mandatories. 
Yeah, that's a fact. That's contractually built into all WBC contracts. So no, there's no way Dillian, there's no amount of lawyers that Dillian can have to get around that fact. Dillian's been cucked again. But in my opinion, in a way, this all could work out nicely. I think it should be AJ versus Dillian. And the winner of that fight then fights the winner. If AJ can't get past Dillian, well, he weren't going to beat no one else anyway, was he? Bear in mind, AJ's already got a dub over Dillian. That fight makes perfect sense now as a final eliminator. Now, will, will, I mean, and by the way, this would be a very special final eliminator in as much as it's the undisputed final eliminator. Not just one belt, you get all four. But is Dillian going to want to do that? I'm not sure. I think Dillian's always taken the AJ fight as a kind of a savings account. He's thinking, well, because that's back in 2019, Dillian was offered the fight, but he said, no, no, I want to get a belt first, so it's worth more. Well, now AJ ain't got no belt. And the thing with Dillian, he's not smart because Dillian clearly, Dillian was a buyer of Anthony Johnson's shares. Yeah, he was all the way buying all the Anthony Johnson's shares because he was basically gambling this whole time that AJ would continue winning, wasn't he? Because I bet you any money, if, if Dillian White knew what he knew now, it'd have took the fight. Because that fight's going downhill every day. Every time Anthony Johnson, every time a cruiserweight ends up having a go on Mr. Anthony Johnston, that, that fight's good for nothing now, isn't it? Really? Who really wants to watch Dillian White go in there with a frail, scary dude? I don't. Yeah? I think Anthony Johnston should retire, truth be known. And that's, that's coming from a place of a good, honest, fair place. I think he should. Save himself... Do, do himself a favour, yeah, and stick to sparring in the gym, because I know you love sparring, but this ain't, this game ain't about sparring, yeah, watch Anthony Yard, if you need inspiration of what a fight's about, of what Get Back's about, watch Anthony Yardy, yeah, he came out, and I couldn't, I've got videos coming soon, but look at the passion on Anthony Yardy's face when he's throwing shots, did you, did any of you man see AJ's face look all screwed up like Anthony Yardy's did once, no, AJ was in a sparring match, yeah? When you're sparring, you don't really screw your face up. You don't really dig and, and grit your teeth. Anthony Yardy was pure face scrunched up. He was me mugging, yeah? He was gully looking. All the way gully looking, yeah? Anthony Yardy went full gully looking. 100%. Your man Anthony Johnston taking too many photos. Kissing too many babies. Too funny style. But anyway, listen. You heard there from Fish Eyes. Fish Eyes confirming that everyone wants this big unification fight now. I can't lie to you. Once again, manager YB. I'm kind of scratching my head to be honest with you. Now, whilst as an AJ supporter to an extent, I do believe AJ needs more time. And I do believe AJ needs to sack his team. And I do believe AJ step aside makes business and financial sense. Step aside, bring the YB in, get to work. Get you back totally ferocious in the ring and out, and we can go and go and tap somebody, go and hang out the back of some of these dudes. Hundred percent, no win, no fee. Hundred percent. Who who offering that? Who doing that? Oops. <laughs> who offering? Who in this game offering no win, no fee? Who doing it? No one. That's the answer to that question. Yeah. Why we come in and we can end up hanging at the back of Usyk, hanging at the back of Tyson Fury, and any other one who wants it. Hundred percent. But anyway, what I'm saying is. On a serious note, if Ant if it me Ant if, if Anthony Johnston is moving trainers, it does make sense. But not only does it make sense from that point of view, also it makes a bigger fight. It means you get to go straight to the Fury fight, and then if I was in charge of things, Smoke Fury. In fact, I'm trying to think now. Why is it better? Yeah, uh, that's the point. Yeah, you need the reason it makes sense to go to Fury. And not do the Usyk rematch is time. You need time right now. So from Anthony Johnson's point of view, it makes sense. If he's going to make the changes. If he's going to bring someone else in. Shane. Why be? Yeah? Someone who know what they're doing. 100%. Someone who got 10 out of 10 experience. Someone someone who's been doing this game for 20 years. 100%. Yeah? People like the YB. Yeah? People like Custia Mahato. All them kind of cats there. You know, you know what I'm saying? All them kind of cats who are in the same... Who we talk about at the top level of trainers. You've got people like Emmanuel Stewart. Yeah? Manny Stewart. People like Gus Diamato. People like the YB. All them ones there. Yeah? Bring one of them kind of caliber cats in. 100%. <laughs> but no, 
<laughs> On a serious note, if that's happening, all of us can get behind that. But like I said, what we ain't gonna do, we ain't getting behind no Eddie Hearn's spin job. Yeah? And that's another thing, I'm sick of people taking my bars. Eddie, what why ain't why aren't you dropping what happened to what happened, yeah, to dropping citations? What happened to dropping references? Oh well, Eddie all of a sudden I've never heard Eddie talk about trainer. Oh well, you know, if, if AJ gonna need time to get used to a new trainer. What? Who no one said that bar. But now since you think it's convenient, but don't worry, listen Eddie. If he hasn't changed trainer and you think you're gonna be dropping that one about you needing more time, <laughs> oh you <laughs> trust me. You're going to wish you never mentioned trainer. Because Rob ain't doing no training. If Rob was, he, number one, he wouldn't be in Lithuania. Oops. Number two, he, we wouldn't be ten years down the line and getting whooped by any man who wants to go. Any man who isn't 40 year old can have a go on Mr. Johnson. It's a fact. Anyone who wants to, anyone who ain't 50 year old and wants to go can have a go on Johnston. 100%. That's just what it is. Because Ruiz wasn't 50 year old, had a go. Usyk wasn't 50 year old, had a go. Pulev was 50 year old, didn't have a go. Eh, that's how it's going right now. It's 50 50. And that's not how the kind of athlete, that's not how you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be that guy. So, yeah, if you need time, take time. However, thinking about other people, because we're hearing about, we hear fish eyes say, oh, yeah, you know, it's, everyone wants it. But like I said, manager YB is kind of scratching his head here, thinking, why is Usyk? Now, I don't want to put nothing off, to be fair, because I think Team Usyk are a bit low IQ, to be honest with you, which doesn't actually shock me today, because the level of management is low IQ, bottom line. But let me explain what I mean. Why is Usyk pushing for the Fury fight? Because... By pushing for the Fury fight, Usyk is essentially throwing away. In fact, he's not only throwing away the AJ fight, he's also paying to throw away the AJ fight. If I'm Usyk, I'm thinking, well, let's do the AJ fight, I'll beat AJ, and then I'll fight Fury. Why would he miss out? Why, why is Usyk rushing? To go to the Fury fight, which arguably is smaller in terms of revenue than the AJ fight would be. If that makes sense. Unless it's not unless that's not the case, unless Fury versus Usyk is gonna put more coins in Usyk's pocket. And unless Usyk believes the Fury fight is easier. Which I can't believe, but maybe that's the only way it makes sense. The only way it makes sense for for Usyk to be pushing for the Fury fight is if he thinks that, oh, you know what, the AJ fight's a bit risky and I think the Fury fight's easier. Let me get that belt and then circle back. Because if Usyk thinks the Fury fight's harder, why would he potentially, yeah? Think about it. If, this, if Usyk loses to Fury, he's then got no AJ fight because AJ is going to be fighting Fury now so Usyk's lost that payday and Usyk's got no belts now <laughs> so, so I'm kind of confused and, and even from Fury's point of view why would Fury pay for step aside well tell a lie there is some advantages Fury would pay for step aside if he believes Usyk is an easy fight which Probably is the case. So maybe actually, it, maybe actually, it does make sense for Fury. Now, some people are saying, "Why be? Why is it making sense for Fury?" Well, it makes sense for Fury because he, he really Fury and Team Fury, they want to protect AJ. They don't want Usyk having another go on AJ. Why? Because that completely kills the market value. I believe it's actually worth more to Fury to pay for step aside. Because that says, that's still, you know what I'm saying? Like, for example, if Usyk beats AJ again, twice. And then Fury goes on to beat Usyk. Fury will be undisputed. But that AJ fight, that massive colossal AJ fight, is completely gone, isn't it? Because, especially if, I mean, if Usyk stops AJ, it's well, well done. Because there's no mystery at all, is there? In terms of the Fury versus, in terms of, of a Fury undisputed versus AJ, who just been stopped by Usyk. 
It's absolutely no mystery. And that fight goes from being what? For argument's sake, that fight goes from being an $80 million fight to a $40 million fight overnight. Whereas now, yes, the fight still is nowhere near as attractive as it was. But if Fury, if Team Fury pay AJ to step aside now, it at least leaves AJ in a state where, oh look, he, he only lost to Usyk once and how is he going to come back? Is he going to get back on track? Is he going to be able to pull off an Anthony Yardi and go in there totally ferocious? If Usyk washes AJ's wig twice in a row, that, sh that proves that AJ is completely finished, isn't he? And actually, to be, to be honest, AJ has not proven... He's got the ferociousness. Because even when he lost to Ruiz, what happened? He came back and flapped. And now people, now three years later, now two and a half, three years later, after I told you why it was dangerous, now it's now it all should be making sense to you, man. Three years later, three years after you dopey dons, didn't get what I was saying, now you're beginning to comprehend why it was important for Anthony Johnson to go in there and get his get back properly. Otherwise, you end up where we are now. Yeah, Team AJ allowed this nervous energy to fester and thrive. Yeah, now at the time, when AJ went in there and beat Ruiz barely, or you know, when AJ went in there and ran from Ruiz, but ran to a decision win, everyone was held in it. Everyone was holding it to, oh, look, he YB back. Yeah, YB, look, he dominated, and oh, he won every round, and that's how everyone was gassing it. Me, I saw it as a big red flag. I saw it as a, wow. You haven't addressed any of the demons in your closet. All you've done is stash them away somewhere. All you've essentially done is literally run from your demons. You haven't fixed any of the underlying problems. And unfortunately, when you leave things hidden away, yeah, facts. AJ ran from the problems. The problems with AJ's style against Ruiz wasn't the overall style. Team AJ looked at AJ versus Ruiz 1 and thought, oh look, that proves that we've been doing it wrong the last 10 years that proves our, it, that proves our whole style's wrong let's completely recreate ourselves rather than saying you know what that ruiz one loss proves we have holes in our defense we have holes in our offense and we need to improve them that's what should have been the that's what should have been the answer here we're going to tighten up our defense we're going to tighten up our offense Boom. Yeah. And if, trust me, if Ruiz had to beat AJ with a tight offense and a tight defense, so be it. He's the better man. Isn't it? That's how it works. If you go in there, your best self, and get beat, who can argue with that? But I argue it's better to go out like that than it is to change yourself and kind of cheat your way to a victory. You cheated yourself. That's all you did. Ruiz, too, was a cheat yourself win. Any by any means necessary win. Not it wasn't a double down on yourself win. For me, it's almost like. Well, you know what? Scrap it. Listen, the bottom line is. Yeah, the bottom line is. I'm not sure. We're, I mean, we're all over the place here. But step aside, no step aside. I think the fact that the fact they're talking about it means it's going to happen. Bottom line for me. Why would this be a new... And it, think about it. Why are they bringing this up for if it's not going to happen? Especially to this degree. This isn't the case where Eddie Hearn's saying it or Frank Warren's saying it and there's no follow through. We've now got every single party not only discussing it but also... I mean, you heard from Frank there. Frank's literally saying everyone wants it. Now, I mean, treat to know. And that's one thing I arguably the interviewer didn't ask. Which is really quite a basic question. My question would be to Frank. Why? You've said there that everyone wants this fight. Can you explain why? Why are you so desperate to get the Undisputed fight on? Because in reality, the Undisputed fight is only actually six months away. If that makes sense. For example, AJ fights Usyk in March or April. Dillian fights Fury in March, April. And then six months from then, boom. So it's only six months delayed because even if you get the Undisputed done now, it's not going to happen till March. So Undisputed at best can happen in March if there is step aside. 
if you go through with the next fights, i.e. Usyk versus AJ, rematch, and Dillian White versus Fury, that only delays things by six months. So I am quite, I'm quite com not confused, but I am wondering what's driving this. I want, I would like to know what the different motivations are, because it's all a bit messy for me. And really, it makes is that all from a pure business point of view, or from a pure. Yeah, I'm not sure about the business. I think the business is messy and it's all different for different people. But from a sport point of view, it makes sense just to do things as they're being done. Get the rematch out of the way, get Dillian White fight out of the way, and then we really have a pure undisputed. This step aside thing, in a way, it could be potentially cheating the true undisputed fight. Meaning that, let's say Dillian White beats Fury, then that would have proven that Fury really wasn't a true undisputed. By having these fights, or for example, let's say Usyk beats Fury. That may, let's say they paid a step aside, yeah, and Usyk beats Fury. Then it could have been the case that AJ was going to win the rematch. See what I'm trying to say? So by rushing things, if we let these events play out, Wilder, sorry, Fury and White, Usyk, and AJ, we actually get a pure undisputed. Because really, undisputed means there's no disputes. And if these next six months of fights happen before the undisputed, there really will be an, a true undisputed champion. Because if we rush, yeah, there's a good argument. Yeah, it's 90% likely that the winner of Usyk and Fury is the true undisputed. But there will still be claims, like the AJ claim. Like the Dillian White claim, for example. Dillian White can still claim, oh, look, they're ducking me. AJ can claim, even though he would have been paid step aside, so he can't claim nothing. But you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about from a principal point of view. AJ fans will still be saying, yeah, but he can, yeah, but the rematch. And I mean, I've seen him say it, so I don't know. But to be honest, the one positive thing I'll say is that as a boxing fan, I don't really care. Because finally, well, I'm going to touch wood because I'm going to touch wood and cross my fingers because you know what boxing's like. But what I was about to say is, the good news is, is that finally, whatever we're talking about is good fights, if that makes sense. Whether it's Fury and Usyk, that's a cracking fight. Whether it's AJ and Usyk, that's a cracking fight. Whether it's Fury and White, that's a cracking fight. Even if it's whether it's Fury and Joe Joyce, cracking fight. Finally, it's taken five years to get to this point where we're actually only having proper fights. And this, for me, is really how the sport should be. Every single division, every single fight. For example, yeah, we shouldn't have. Tonight we've had Devin Haney versus Jojo Diaz. That fight should never happen. And I'm not blaming Devin Haney because I think it was a mandatory. But either way, fights like that, they shouldn't even be possible. The only way you get to fight for a world championship is if you've beat the contenders. That's how it should be. So essentially... People who have beat contenders would already be a name. Hence, there should be no occasions of a man with a world title belt fighting someone unknown. Because in my be I believe the only way to get a world championship should be to beat your peers. For example, Joe Joyce should have fought Usyk. The winner of that fight would have been a world championship challenger. Because he's taken out his peers. Yeah? Instead, we have Usyk, who ain't really done nothing. Yeah, he beat AJ, but it's not the point. The point is, it should be name versus name every time. There should be a clear lineage. Oh, look, YB. Joe Joyce beat Dubois. Um, Usyk beat Joyce. That'd be a, that's a perfect lineage there. You can see how that leads to a world title. Usyk beat the man who beat the, the man, if that makes sense. Which would be the case. If Usyk beat Joe Joyce. And Joe Joyce beat Dubois. Which happened. That there's. You can't really argue that. That guy doesn't deserve a world, world championship. Yeah. Joe Joe Diaz. Who. Which. Which Joe Joyce did. Which Joe Joyce did. Um, which Joe Joyce. Did Joe Joe Diaz beat. Yeah. I mean. Which Tanya Dubois. Did Joe Joe Diaz beat. Exactly. Don't, don't no one know. But anyway. The point is. Like I said. I'm happy that we're finally here. Well. Tell I. We haven't got the fights booked in yet. But it's looking like we're in that we're in the mix now. 
And it almost feels like it's a Super 6 tournament. Oh, AJ going to be doing this and Fury and whatever else. So let's just make sure these things get locked in. Because there is a risk. I've heard Team Fury saying that, well, he's going to be fighting in March no matter what. And, uh, but I haven't seen him saying it's going to be Dillian. But then again, it might be Joe Joyce. And that's fine for me. I, can't, I don't really care about Dillian, if that makes sense. In as much as... He's making his own problems now, yeah? He waited three years, and then the one time he was almost guaranteed a shot, now he's complaining about how he doesn't how, about how he doesn't want to be paid to mandatory, to standard mandatory. I'm thinking to myself, well, now I'm not sure about them. Um, Eddie Hearn alleges that, that, the, that mandatories are allowed up to 45%, but I've never heard of that. I'm pretty sure that AJ versus Usyk mandatory was up 25%. So the whole point of a mandatory is you get your shot. Yeah, do you think, Dillian, do you think you're going to win or are you just trying to cash a, cash the coins in? Because to me, the way you've been acting over the years, really, you moan and fight bums. But when the big shots come, for example, AJ offered you $5 million, which was double the Chisora fight, for you to fight for three belts and get get back. You didn't want it. So, how much sympathy do we have? Because if you believed you were going to win, and, and by the way, people, you ended up getting smoked by Povetkin for a lot less. Which makes me think that, <laughs> who does Dillian really have to blame? Yeah? Bottom line, at this point in time, he's had plenty of opportunity. Or he's had, more, he's, had, he's had more opportunity than most people have. Who else? Who do you know gets a $5 million AJ fight and turns it down? That's never happened. Literally, it'll tell a lie. Tell a lie. I lied to you. Louis Old T's turned it down as well. Scary ass. Dopey ass, man. But anyway, let's see how that plays out. No doubt.